Good morning from the Brazil Congress of Cataract and Refractive Surgery. We're pleased to be here this morning with Dr. Claudio Trindade from Belo Horizonte, Brazil. Thanks very much for being here. Oh, my pleasure. Claudio, I know you have been working with a very exciting novel intraocular lens implant. Can you tell us a little bit about this implant and how it works? Yes. Uh, we've been doing this study on this new supplementary implant. Uh, I don't like to call it an IOL because it's actually just a diaphragm. It has no refractive power. It has a, a, a platform similar to a Sulcus IOL, but it's pretty much made of a foldable black acrylic, and it's supposed to go in the Sulcus of pseudophagic patients. Uh, and the, the mechanism of action is, is a very solid principle, which is the pinhole principle. Mm -hmm. And we're, we've been using it in cases, in challenging cases of irregular stigmatism, such as uh, post-RK patients, uh, post-PK patients, and keratoconus, mostly. And secondarily, we can do it in, in, in patients with pseudophagic presbyopia, with, uh, uh, to extend up the focus and improve uncorrected near vision. So it sounds like, Claudio, what we're saying is that we have a patient who has irregular astigmatism related to either corneal ectasia or, uh, or post-refractive uh, irregularities or, or even post-transplant irregularities, and they already have an intraocular lens um, in the capsular bag as a result of having had cataract surgery, correct? Yes, or, or you have that in mind. You're planning on, on doing cataract surgery and you want to uh, step forward and, and think ahead of, of the problems that might be ahead. Those cases are always a challenge okay. for cataract surgeons. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's you can do it primarily during cataract surgery or secondarily on, on second stage to improve the result. I understand. Well, well, let's talk a little bit about the physical properties of the lens implant or, or uh, of the implant that you're using. And I understand that there's a central pinhole and that the remainder of the implant is black in color. Is that right? Yes. Well, why is that the case? Why is it important that there be a central opening and then the rest of it blocked out uh, by, a, by a dark color? Well, uh, the, the, I think the pinhole principle, uh, uh, it needs to, to occlude as, and leave the central area open. And this reduction of light entrance will lead to the to, to minimize, to minimization of, of corneal aberrations. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all do that in our office, just with a pinhole occluder in those cases. And we can tell by the, the patient that, that they can see much better. Mm -hmm. And so it's a very solid principle, an ancient principle. So, so presumably this implant uh, needs to be very well centered in the ciliary sulcus in order for the pinhole principle to work properly. Is that right? Well, it, it, it's quite forgiving. Uh, mm -hmm. At the end, it, it will always uh, stay at the geometrical center of the ciliary sulcus. And there is a, a, a small uh, variation to that position, but uh, what we've noticed and, and is that the, the, this, these slight disintrations are very tolerated by the patients, mm -hmm. and actually we, we always try to, to keep it a little decentered towards the nasal side, and that's very well explained by the Stiles Crawford effect, and, uh, and which, which says that the, the most important part of the pupil in terms of luminance efficiency is it's not the center of the pupil, it's light uh, uh, decentered towards the nasal side. Claudio, one of the concerns I think I would have about using a pinhole device in order to certainly improve the patient's uh, vision by reducing irregularities in the visual axis, but what about the physician's ability to examine the posterior pole? Would not the pinhole limit how much of the retina and optic nerve we may be able to see and examine and monitor on a regular basis? For sure, this is absolutely true. When you have a, a small occlusion, it'll be very challenging to examine the back part of the eye. And this is where the, this, this material has a very neat property because at the same time that it is totally black, it, it is 100% transparent to infrared light. Mm -hmm. So when we use infrared equipment, such as OCTs or even scanning laser ophthalmoscopes, one can examine the back part of the eye very easily. And with infrared modified slit lamps, we can see structures right behind the implant, such as the IOL or, or any other structure right behind. So this is a very special property of this material, and uh, it allowed us to do that. Uh, nonetheless, this, this does not 
uh, uh, it, it still is not uh, a three-dimensional image of the retina, so it is uh, crucial to, to perform a very detailed indirect ophthalmoscopy before implantation mm -hmm. and treat any, any conditions that, that might that are important before surgery. Well, this is such a fascinating new technology, Claudio, and I'm really pleased you're able to share your expertise with us uh, on it, and I'm excited to see the data as it continues to go forward. Thanks well, thank very much. Thank you, Jonathan. My pleasure.